I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, the nine o'clock block on a given Thursday. And we're initiating a show called The Movie Show with our movie reviewer, George Kaysen. Good morning, George. Nice to see your smiling face. Good morning, Jay. Good to see you. So um, you, you looked at and uh, really appreciate the time you spent in it, um, reviewing the movie called, it's a serial uh, called uh, the Underground Railroad. This is particularly appropriate right now because we've had a lot of news about uh, June 19th. Um, and um, in fact, uh, Governor Ige signed a bill and uh, President Biden's about to sign a bill designating that a, a holiday, both state and federal. So it's appropriate that we talk about the Underground Railway because it is about slavery in the 19th century in the South. Um, and uh, taking the railroad, so to speak, to the north. So can you give us your impression about this movie? Some people said it was unnecessarily violent. You think it was? That was one of the points I want to make about violence in movies, on all shows, TV, movies, and how it anesthetizes those in our society who have some mental issues. So I really, would, I would agree totally that we have to try to see if we can get less violence. There's, there was a lot of shooting, killing. And as I said, when, you, when these young people and older people who have issues see that, they, they get anesthetized that killing is, is okay. So definitely I agree with wholeheartedly on that question, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I saw, I didn't see as much of it as you did and I appreciate you looking at it. But I, I thought that um, this, this was interesting and different in the sense that you got to be in the environment of slavery. You got to be next to, with, you know, even thinking in the mind to the extent that was possible um, of a slave on a plantation in those days. And it was much more graphic than I had ever seen before anywhere. Uh, it was much more troubling actually because, you know, it's one thing if you're reading a book and they tell you that there were brutalities, but if you see them, and certainly this movie, this serial, did show brutalities to you. What did you think about that? Was that accurate? Um, was that appropriate? I think that the atrocities were, you know, it was accurate. Um, the timing uh, was not accurate, and some of the other historical facts that are really peripheral to the main issue of, of how brutal slave slavery was. And as a former history teacher, I'm very hung up on accuracy, historical accuracy. And I'll get and I'm sensitive because of what happened to my family in Turkey, and then the way Turkey has been uh, altering historical record. And then there was two Israeli uh, historians last year corrected everything. They wrote a book. So so I'm very sad. Now, the issues I have is that South, for instance, South Carolina was depicted as, as less horrendous for slaves, but I, I, that was not the case. South Carolina was more onerous than North Carolina. So that was only one of it. And, and um, also, I, I, maybe I should get on a tangent. There was no railroad. There was no underground railroad. There was no, it was, it was only alluded to that, that it was, you know, there were all these halfway how these houses that would be protecting slaves as they went to the North or to Canada. And, um, and uh, there was nothing underground except maybe from occasionally. So th those were the main well, things. That, that really lost credit, <clears throat> credibility for me. Yes. As I yeah. say, what, are you kidding me? Who in the world? Could have built a railroad underground that was not, um, you know, visible, was not known, um, and and went all the way that way. Uh, it was it was that was ridiculous. It, it was, you know, it was a play on words to start with, but here it was a completely unexplained, completely fictitious idea. And I said to myself, "Gee, how much of this can I believe if they're creating it out of whole cloth that way?" There was no, it was a conceptual railroad all the way to Canada. Um, but it, but it wasn't an actual. Can you imagine who was going to do that? Who was going to, you know, dig all that soil out and, and secretly <laughs> and get a locomotive underground? How do you do that? <laughs> it was the author of the novel. 
who used to believe this when he was a small child. So when he wrote the novel, he wanted to project that <laughs> into his novel. And there were, you know, I mean, there were other things I can, it'll come to, my, to mind of the, the, how it wasn't really historically accurate. But, but that was the main thing that both you and I sort of feel that it's sort of, it, it, that's when I first started seeing it, you know, the brutality was very real, but it sort of left a credibility to me because, because he, they're, they, they're depicting an underground railroad when there was none, you know? So that, it just made me laugh. But as you said, it, that was the initial thing that I questioned the credibility. And then I went back and researched South Carolina, North Carolina, first Georgia, where they, they, they started. And then from North Carolina, they went to Tennessee. They jumped over Kentucky to Indiana. And then there was that Valentine's farm massacre of this more affluent, beautiful farm, right? But that wasn't accurate. It, that, the reality happened in Tulsa, in Greenwood, in 1921, which was way after the Emancipation Proclamation, Juneteenth, all of that, right? And so, even in 1921, and to this present day, presently, Republican legislators, legislatures are trying to do Jim Crow laws to restrict black and other brown, you know, minority people from voting. So we're in 2021, which is a hundred years after 1921, when, when there was that horrible massacre of affluent, of affluent black community in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we're still dealing and we're still dealing with black people being shot. I mean, George Floyd, it was with a policeman, but there was this other runner, nice young black guy was running in his neighborhood and, and these three white rednecks, I hate to say white, but that they shot him just because he was running in the neighborhood. So I'll be quiet now, but that's, that's the point that there's, as you said, there's credibility issues. The other thing I wondered about, and you must have questioned it yourself, is that part of the early, um, you know, episodes on the series uh, involved a community in Atlanta, which elevated former slaves to lead an elegant life. Um, they were well dressed. They went to balls. They ate like kings. Um, they were, you know, they were living the high life. As, as, as well as any Southern belle might live the high life. The only thing, and this was really nefarious, the only thing was that they, they couldn't have kids. They couldn't get married. Um, they had to stay in this kind of static arrangement where they were like on display um, as uh, successful former slaves. It was, it was nerve wracking to watch it because you knew that all around, this is antebellum all around. There were horrible things going on. Yet these people somehow had found a niche of, um, of, of, uh, of uh, um, affluence in Atlanta. Was there any truth to that? It was in South Carolina when they had gone from Georgia into South Carolina. There was, from my perspective, there was no truth to that at all. Because as I said, South Carolina, the, the, the slave laws were more onerous against slaves than even in North Carolina, which is also onerous. So that was total fantasy. I, I mean, the author of the novel uh, did a lot of this, it, you know, it was fiction. It, you know, the basics are important that it was, so it was brutal, it was horrible, but, um, but these facts were, like you said, it wasn't even in, in Georgia, it was in South Carolina. And yes, they were in finery and they were having a beautiful life dancing. She and her first boyfriend that, you know, um, that he looked like he was part Native American, you know, all, all of that is just all, all fantasy. I mean, this, other than the basics, as you said, of the brutality of slavery, a lot of the historical facts were all, you know, I mean, and plus, not only do you have the author of the novel, plus the screenplay, it was, changes and then the producer and the directors they also made changes to make it more you know appealing or more interesting so the facts were sort of but that was south carolina but that's that was not in the in the movie but that was not the facts it that that's totally you know 
bogus. It's very troubling. It's very troubling because uh, a lot of people may not see the distinction that you're talking about. They may say, well, okay, it's, you know, it's, um, it's realistic enough that I believe it. And it must have happened something like this. And so, okay, I'll accept this as my history lesson for today. But that's very misleading because it isn't true. And you get, you get this mixture of fantasy and fact, and you, you, know, you come out the other side and you don't know what happened. And, and, and therefore, I mean, me, um, I, I begin to question you know, the whole premise uh, because the Underground Railroad in American history was a real thing. <clears throat> and, and if I don't know the difference, I say, hmm, that's interesting the way it worked here. These are really interesting things, but I don't think it portrayed itself as fictitious. It asked you to believe. My, my issue is as its former teacher, high school and, and uh, junior high school social studies teacher, these kids or even adults are gonna see this thing, believe it's true, right? And, and they're gonna think that, that, uh, that Valentine's Farm, that massacre happened before the Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation, before Juneteenth, right? 1860, June 19, 1865. And, and they're gonna think it happened in Indiana when it happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921. And then so many other facts that, that are like just not true. And then and the kids are gonna believe that there was an underground railroad, actual trains underground. And this is, and this is what they're gonna believe. And the teacher's gonna ask them, you know, uh, maybe they're gonna study under slavery. And the, these young kids are gonna think that there was actually an underground railroad. So, I mean, that's why, I'm, I was initially very uncomfortable with all these lack of historical veracity. But the basic idea, as you said, it's important for the public to know how brutal slavery was given the present political climate where they're trying to, you know, changing history that there are these people that say the Holocaust never happened. My family in Turkey, that it never happened. You know, this is all, um, you know, so that's why I believe in historical veracity so that young kids don't get the wrong idea. Well, you know, the problem is, <clears throat> if I tell you there's a railroad where there wasn't one, if I tell you about a community in Atlanta where it really wasn't like that, if I tell you about, um, you know, the Valentine Farm issue that didn't happen until 1921 in Oklahoma, um, I, am, I am undermining... <clears throat> The, your understanding of history. And, right. and if you lose confidence, okay, in what I am rendering to you, then maybe you don't accept, and some people would probably take it this way, then maybe you don't accept, um, you know, the underlying story that you and I both found credible, that is that there were atrocities uh, on these plantations. Um, and then the whole thing loses, the whole thing loses credibility. And then, you know, a young person says, well, you know, this is television. I, I can't believe anything on here. Um, and it's just like, uh, you know, the news that Trump has uh, criticized, you know, for being fake. Um, and so, and, and then of course you have this really troublesome aspect about American entertainment slash news where you don't know which one is which and you don't know which one is accurate or not accurate. You, you don't know whether you're getting a straight poop. And this is this is troublesome. I don't know how we fix that, George, but this movie is an example of how you can get off. May I say, I have to say this, off track. Yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that was definitely off track. So, you know, part of it too is this. I mean, if you watch the cable serials, you say, my goodness gracious, there's a whole generation of people coming up into the movie industry that really know how to make um, high value productions. You know, the lighting, the color, the sound, ah, it's beautiful. And it, it actually adds to the credibility, even if you shouldn't be giving it all that much credibility. And you say to yourself, this is, this is really entertaining. Um, engaging, uh, very watchable. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a work of art. It's what it is. It's a work of art. And you can take that same team and you can give them a script that is completely untrue uh, and have them produce it in, in a way that appeals to people and where everybody's going to go and watch it. 
And I don't know, this is also troubling to me. I'd really ra rather watch an old fashioned black, black and white um, documentary that's, that doesn't have this high value uh, aspect to it. Um, and, and then I would be educated, although maybe not so much entertained. So true. I mean, the acting was superb. That South African actress for, that did Cora, she was phenomenal. The, the bad guy that, that was trying to, you know, slave catcher, he, he was really good. They were all great actors. And this, as you said, the scenery, absolutely fantastic, beautiful, you know, pictures and everything. But the, as we said, the veracity was, was there. And, and in today's day and age, there's so much fake news out there that I don't want to see, I mean, people enjoying this, you know, I mean, to me, I like 1940s, you know, black and white, happy movies, you know, in my old age. I, Fred I mean, Astaire and Ginger Rogers. <laughs> this, this was, stre I mean, this was stressful. Those 10 hours of seeing these black people getting um, cut and whipped and, and killed and, and horrible, horrible things left, left for dead. You know, it was just horrible. So it was trying. But so, so I mean, I like these 40 movies like, you know, Casablanca and all these other movies that, that were, you know, pleasant. But um, it's, as you said, fake, it, th there's a fakeness there and it, it has perv it's pervading our society today. And, and Donald J. Trump was, is a key factor in, in fake, fake news, you know? There's, I mean, every other thing that comes out of his mouth is, 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 is false and people believe it. So, I mean, that's why this movie sort of got under my skin. And, you would, know, would you say this is a fake movie? Uh, I would say there's a lot of historical inaccuracies there, especially when you said Atlanta, you know, South Carolina, that those black people enjoying themselves dancing on the ballrooms, that was totally bogus. I mean, that might have happened, you know, maybe in the north, because New York, New Jersey were states, but by 1800, they, they didn't have slavery anymore. And, you know, that's the second part of what I wanted to discuss is how black people rose when they weren't being held down, like in the North, right? Um, you know, my mother was from Patterson, New Jersey. She was raised there. And they were affluent black people that, that they knew. I mean, their neighbors, you know? I mean, Patterson had a very early black community and they became like, like I was alluding to in, in an email, my mother at 18, she wasn't Native American, but she was modeling as a Native American for this artist, Rolf Armstrong, who, who did calendar girl pictures. And she had appendicitis. So her brothers didn't want to have a regular appendicitis operation. So they found this black doctor in Patterson who had finished medical school at 58 years old, right? And he had perfected a buttonhole appendectomy. This is back, when my mother's born in 1911. So this was in the, in the late 20s, right? Like right when she was modeling, when she won the Arthur Murray beauty contest, that's how she got into modeling. This guy showed up. And, uh -huh. It was 1929 and, and gave her that, that, that buttonhole up in the back of me. That's the kind of black people there. And when they moved to, from Patterson, they, they got, my family got wealthy, that dry cleaning, five dry cleaning stores within 10 years. And then they moved to Montclair and Montclair also had affluent blacks. So when you have that kind of a difference, right? The North and the South, the South Ku Klux Klan, black people still getting lynched and it was much better in New York, New Jersey. I mean, for, for blacks, that's why they all left with the under with the real underground railroad and went to Canada because there was freedom. And then they could they could meet their own level of of you know rise in the society where they weren't being unnaturally being held down. So you know that that and then when I lived to Long Island, like I was saying, Rochelle Griffiths gig was her, his her mother was white, her father was black. They lived in the in the white neighborhood. They didn't live in a little in the black enclave we had in our community, which was the same, the same kind of houses. You know, it, it was just a separate black community. But George Griffiths was a building contractor, very well known, very well respected. My mother had him was going to have him put an extension in our on our house. So here you had an, a, a a black papa like Obama family totally integrated into the white community. And Rochelle married Mark Auslander, who was her boyfriend there in high school. 
and, and she's an attorney now up in Westchester County, and she's very successful. That's what you have when you don't hold people. Well, that's not to say that, you know, what's interesting is you had the plantation experience in the South yeah. that was built in by the founding fathers. They, 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 they could have done the 14th or whatever the, uh, was it, the 13th Amendment um, long before um, 1865. Um, but they, they didn't do that. And they, they built slavery, baked it into the country. <clears throat> and for 80 years between uh, 1780 something, uh, when the constitution was written uh, originally and, and uh, 1865, that's a long time. And in that period, uh, one interesting ha thing happened. <clears throat> it was the, uh, the, the Clotilda, experience where the, the, the ship, this was on 60 Minutes, the ship was uh, the last slave ship in 1808. Why? <clears throat> because Congress had outlawed bringing new slaves to the country in 1808. It was against the law. And, and so the whole thing was like baked in. It was, uh, and the slave owners said, oh, that's okay. We'll just have them have a lot of children and we'll build our inventory of slaves that way. And they kept on doing it. In fact, it got worse in my observation. Not that I was there, but in my reading anyway. And so what you had was really two different worlds. And economically, the slave owners were very wealthy because they had these assets that kept on working for them. And the children kept on working. And it was, uh, um, you know, the, the cost of, of their labor was free, essentially, after you paid for them. Um, and the, the product was huge, depending on how much you push them around. And so the whole civilization developed down there. And these guys felt more and more strongly about it as you get to the Civil War. <clears throat> and the Civil War was about slavery, really. Uh, <clears throat> and they tried to perpetuate it. It was very important to them. <clears throat> and, and, and they never really accepted the result of the Civil War. Um, and they beat the federal reconstruction. They, they, it collapsed by the end of the 19th century. And, and we had the Ku Klux Klan reemerging in the 1920s, right around the, the time of the Oklahoma uh, incident, massacre. So it, somehow the whole notion of slavery and the distinction between black and white um, is it started with the Constitution and it continues till today. And yes. one other story I want to mention just to provoke you is that although there was no slavery in the non-slavery states prior to the Civil War, there was plenty of racial discrimination, yeah. racial hatred. And there was a, an incident that took place in 1863 during the Civil War, during Lincoln's um, you know, attempt to um, terminate slavery in New York City. It was a hot Saturday night. You know the story? It was, it was uh, the New York riots, August of 1863. And um, there, there was some issue about, uh, about the draft. And um, the Irish community, which was um, uh, fond of drinking in bars on Saturday night, it was a Saturday night, um, were very excited about this um, rule that had come down from Washington, the proclamation, I guess on how you could avoid the draft by paying some money. And they couldn't afford to pay the money. They were ticked off. And this somehow transmuted itself into a race riot, where, where on Saturday night, they went out to look for Blacks in New York City, New York City, not a slave state. And they hung them from the lampposts. It was wholesale lynching in New York City. And unforgettable, really, when you think about it. But it's an example of, okay, we don't have slavery, but that doesn't mean that we don't have anti-Black sentiment. Oh, yeah. And, and so going to Canada was a, was a better bet because I don't think they had the same level of anti-Black sentiment. But all this has to be seen as part of American history. So the movie touches on a number of things. And I think the great loss here is that, you know, the movie doesn't give you the context. Yeah, when they, they showed the Indiana, you know, that beautiful farm until they got massacred, um, you know, that Valentine's farm that was in the north, that was a non-slave state. But, you know, one of the other things what you alluded to about New York in Philadelphia, the two Hawaiian princes uh, that went the, eventually became Kamehameha the fourth and Kamehameha the fifth, 
had gone to Philadelphia with um, what was his name, Judd, you know, and and they were treated very poorly because they were dark skinned, and and that left a very bad mark with them, and it really really affected history of Hawaii because they became very anti-American while their uncle uh, Kamehameha III was very pro-American because of the treatment they received in Philadelphia on some train they were told that, that they can't you know they would because they, they, they the conductor thought they were black so it really left a mark on, on the Hawaiian kingdom as well so slavery bad bad thing and impacted our history here too. So leave it at that. Yeah, well, uh, so the movie is, a, I guess it's a contribution to a couple of points that you may not have been thinking about, such as the, the brutality of the plantations. Yeah. Um, but it, it really doesn't help uh, us understand the enormous implications of slavery. I mean, this is, this is not that long ago. And, and when you think that Reconstruction failed, and a hundred years ago there were racial racial massacres in this country, all an extension of the same kind of slavery thinking. When you think that right now the South is filled with white supremacists who vote for Trump, um, you know we still have the legacy of slavery. It is baked into the American exceptionalism, and. I don't know. Does the movie help us understand that, George? Does the movie help us come up with a solution on this? You know, the, the one thing that, that really left in my mind is before that massacre in, in, um, in the movie Valentine's Farm or in Greenwood in Tulsa, that, you know, um, basically when Black people are not held down unnaturally, they will rise in society. And from my own experiences and my, my mother's experiences, um, that's when you have assimilation. So, so when there's less racism, but I mean, that movie alluded to that a little bit with that South Carolina, that was not true, but then up in Indiana, that there was that maybe after, maybe a little before, but after, you know, emancipation, proclamation and whatever, but it's that, it's like when, when black people assimilate into society and you get to know them. I mean, my mother knew black people from Patterson, you know, their neighbors, you know, and they lived in East Side Patterson, which was the more affluent part of Patterson. You know, you have a different perception. So the movie showed a little bit of that, how, you know, the, the high, the, the beautiful ballroom dancing, but it's that, it's that, just like so many other ethnic groups, you know, and racial groups, when they rise, they become assimilated, you know, like my parents came from overseas and we assimilated us. So that's the key that a little bit of that Valentine's Farm, a little bit of that fake thing from South Carolina is, 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 is was important. And, you know, that it wasn't only that they couldn't have children in South Carolina, they were doing experiments on black people like that Tuskegee thing, where these black men were dying. So they were using them as, as experiments, you know, similar to Dr. Mengele in, in, in during the Nazi, in Nazi era. Right, in the and name he, of science, yeah. Exactly. And, 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 and that's what they were doing. And that was what was being depicted in that South Carolina, which you thought was Atlanta. But I mean, but, I mean the time frame is wrong. The location is wrong. The underground railroad, which does not exist, there are very little underground. It's all fake. So getting back to what you're saying is that we're not there yet. I mean, bottom line is we had a black president, a Hopper black president, and we're still not there. Black people are still being shot in the streets, right? And and we've got to all come together as a community, you know, as a, as our our whole American Ohana. And we're not there yet. And I think you alluded to that. We're not there yet. We're now 2021, and we still and there's still what's going on right now. As, you, as the whole Jim Crow laws, the Republican legislators are in Georgia and, and 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 Arizona. They're trying to cut black and brown people out. You know, uh, through Jim Crow laws. So I'll leave it at that. 
Well, I'd like to add one for your consideration, and that is this. If you're going to make a movie that pretends to be historical, right. then you've got to do the research and you've got to be faithful to the history. It would not have cost okay. these filmmakers anything to be accurate. You know, they picked the wrong state. Why do that? Um, <clears throat> pick the wrong time. Why do that? They could have had a very good movie if they'd only done their homework. And, and I think the, the, the net effect of it is to lose confidence in the movie and the movies misunderstand American history. They would have done a much better job, made a much better contribution if they had only done their homework. What do you think? I couldn't more totally agree with you that that was the problem with this series of 10 so much historical inaccuracies that anybody, any educated person, you know, I was a history teacher, so you know, I, that was my forte, right? That, that, that would know that this is bogus, but the unsuspecting, uneducated public be would believe that this is true and have a totally distorted perception, even though the basics are important to show the brutality. You know, I couldn't agree with you more, a little bit of, and, they didn't even care to, to do research. It was all fantasy. And it was, the, it was the author that started off, you know, as I said, his, his childhood uh, understanding, he portrayed it in this, in this novel and then the uh, screenplay, you know, the person who did the screenplay and then the director and the producers, they, they played with, with the truth. And, and it, it was really bad news, as you said, I mean, a little bit of research would have had a really good movie. Thumbs been... down then? Thumbs down, George? Uh, I would say thumbs down to the, some of the presentation, but the basics of showing that brutality to the public was, one, was good. And as you said, very, they really showed you could actually, I mean, I was, it was breaking my heart. I was getting very upset because it was so real, the, the brutality. But couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I would say thumbs down, but with reservations. There's there's pluses to this movie. Yeah. But I join I join you in that, George. Yeah. Yeah. Good mean, review, George. Thank you very much yeah, for your review of, of the movie. And we'll be back in a week or two with another one, probably completely dissimilar, um, but equally incisive. Thank you so much, George Kaysen, The Movie Show. Aloha. Aloha.